Hello there and welcome back to the Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for another project. Now though I will be going over a little bit of pattern drafting and sewing today, mostly I want to talk about cutting this project out because I get a lot of questions about my striped dresses and projects here on the channel. Whenever I show one of my striped dresses I tend to get a lot of questions about it as if or like uh, comments about how it must be hard to line up the stripes and things like that. So I wanted to go over my tips and tricks or the, my methodology for how I work with striped fabrics and how I line things up to get them to match this perfectly along the center front and things like that. So let's jump on over to the blue patterning table of doom so I can explain. And here we are with my wrap back top pattern that I'll be using today to illustrate how I cut out things with stripes or how I work with stripes in my uh, sewing and design work. So I just have the wrap back top. I will put a card up here to me creating this pattern for, in the first place here. All I'm going to do is change the neckline so that it is a deeper V up here a little bit of a different angle, and then I'm going to move this top dart in the side down closer to the waist, just because I want the fullness in the side to be a little bit more concentrated down towards the waist. Um, I don't think this is actually necessary, really. Like, it probably would have been fine if I didn't do this, but just a little bit of a modification today, because I'm going to actually, instead of use darts for this top today, I'm going to just use the dart fullness as gathering in the side seam. Just, um, then I don't have to match up the stripes at the side either. Um, you know, when you have a garment and you're using a stripe fabric, there becomes a lot of options and choices for where you want to match the stripes and where you don't want to care. You can go ahead and try and match the stripes all over the whole entire garment. Like every seam, the stripes can match up, either match up or um, chevron in some sort of a way. Or you can make decisions like which ones are going to be the easiest to match up and just do those, honestly. Or like the most visible to match up and just do those. So normally I don't really care about my side seams. Um, but today I just thought I would try gathering because I haven't tried that on this top pattern yet. Thought it could be fun to try it out. But I'm going to chevron the stripes down the center front of this, and then I'm going to match up the shoulder, um, the stripes at the shoulder. So I'll show you what that looks like and why I made those decisions when it comes to cutting these things out. But I'm just shifting that top side dart in the front here closed. Of course, this pattern is rather rectangular, you'll notice. This, of course, is my uh, drafted from my all-in-one sleeve, all sleeve bodice pattern to start with. I love me some all-in-one sleeves. It's true. I use them all the time. They are my favorite. They're very easy and I quite like the look of them or like the way that they work on my proportions, I suppose, with the little bit of a stronger shoulder they just have inherently. Helps create the illusion of a smaller waist. Anyway, gathered wrap, back top pattern here. So there's just another tracing and modification of that wrap back top. I use this all the time. I love this top pattern. And I am going to actually use a long ribbon sash to close this one today, which I haven't done yet. So that, that could be fun as well. So here's my fabric. <clears throat> this is a chartreuse and black striped polyester taffeta from moodfabrics.com. Now I could line up these stripes along the shoulder. I could line up the stripes along, along the neckline, which spoiler alert is what I'm going to do. Um, but in order to do so, I'm going to draw on the seam allowance so I can see where it is. So I'm going to draw on half inch along the neckline here. And then I'm going to need to, because I'm not going to be able to cut this on the fold, because I'm going to be doing the stripes set together at the fold, or at the um, front. I won't be able to cut the center front on the fold, so I'm going to add seam allowance down the center front as well. So now that I know, oh, I think I'll chevron this down the front, I can add seam allowance because I will have two pieces that need to meet together and have the stripes match up down the center here. I do have a dress out of the gray and black uh, version of this fabric. I have a full length gown in that. And then I also have a dress, like a cocktail dress made out of the pumpkin orange and black version of this. But of course I had to buy a yard of the chartreuse and black too. I'm surprised I didn't buy more. Honestly, we should all be proud of me. But I'm going to line up the seam allowance here along one of my stripes. Now this fabric is uh, showcasing one of the principles I look for in a striped fabric, which is that this fabric is the exact same on either side both sides of this. The stripes are woven in as opposed to printed onto the fabric. So uh, instead of a solid fabric that has then been printed with black stripes or something, this fabric is woven with black and chartreuse threads. So the stripes are exactly even. They are exactly the same on either side. They are part of the weave of the fabric. So I can cut this on the straight grain like this. Well, with the neckline lined up on the straight grain. And I will, you know, know that the stripes are all aligned because it's woven into the fabric as opposed to printed on. If you have a fabric where the stripes are printed on, or the plaid, let's say, is printed onto the fabric, um, just like roller printed onto the surface, it can be off grain. So the fabric and the stripes might not be aligned, or like the threads making up the weave of the fabric may not be aligned with the stripes, which can lead to trouble if you want to either line things up with stripes or line things up with a grain line. Um, so I really like a woven stripe like this. So I've cut out my first piece here. I'm cutting this out single layer, by the way. I will cut out all four pieces of this 
uh, individually. So instead of cutting this on the fold, I'm going to cut these all individually. Now I want my stripes to match up down the center like this. How am I going to achieve that? I cut this with the neckline matched up with the stripe, right? Between the stripes like this. So technically I can just cut this out again. And because the fabric is the same on both sides, if I just cut out another one of these, I will have these stripes line up perfectly. Just due to the thing that thankfully because of angles and geometry, it just works out that way. So I can actually also just use this instead of using the pattern piece, line this up until it becomes invisible on my stripes here and pin it down and use this as my template instead of my pattern so that I know that this exactly matches up. So you can see I'm just going around making sure everything is aligned. You can't really even see the first piece. Now it's very much blending in, but I promise it's there. I'm going to pin this down and I will cut out the second piece using the first as a template. Of course, this is easier for me because my fabric is the same on both sides. If your fabric is not the same on both sides, you can still put it face down and match it up. Usually fabric, at least a little bit, you can see through what's happening on the other side and you can kind of match it up. So you can still use this method. But again, I could have used my pattern piece to do this as well. Um, because the neckline is aligned along the stripe, I know that that's where it needs to be and it can't be anywhere else. And no matter what, it's going to line up at least down the center front. It might be a tiny bit off elsewhere just because of the fabric shifting around on me, um, which is why I just chose to use the first piece as my template for the second. So now I have two identical pieces, um, but because again, they're the same on the front and back, it will not matter. If I leave it pinned down the middle, now we have this, and this will be gathered down in the sides, and we have that perfect chevroning down the center front seam. So I'm going to pin this the other way because of course I can't sew over my pins unless they are perpendicular. So I'm just going to pin my stripes together perpendicular. Again, they're cut to match up perfectly, but I'm going to make sure they match up as well while I'm pinning. Um, most of the work is done for me in the cutting of this. And so um, it makes, makes everything else easier because it's been cut out thinking ahead when it comes to the stripes. So this one is ready to go, but of course I will still need to keep it nearby because I need to cut out my backs thinking about how the stripes will line up with this. Like so. So I have my back pattern here. The side seam, again, I'm not going to worry about the stripes matching up on the sides, but I do maybe want to think about how they're going to line up here up on the shoulder seam, because that's going to be the next most visible seam, other than like the center front where people obviously are going to look first. The shoulder, especially because I'm only 5'5", five five, people can look down on my shoulder, and so I would like it to look nice. So again, I'm still using a single layer of my fabric here. Now, things to consider. I could line up that shoulder seam along black and then have the stripes going in a different direction in the back than in the front if I wanted to. Um, how you want to, if you want to make your stripes chaotic or if you want to make them all align, it's up to you. So here I'm thinking I might want to chevron the shoulder seam as well. And I was thinking, can I chevron the shoulder and have the back angle of this wrap top go along one stripe? Because that would be nice, right? But I really can't. Um, so what is more important to me, that it's aligned up with a single stripe down the wrap back or that it's lined up with the shoulder. And I decided that having it be chevroned at the shoulder was more important to me. So here I am lining up one of my front pieces along the stripes so I can see where my back piece needs to be. And I will go ahead and pin this in place right here so that when that gets sewn together later, I can have it chevroned across the shoulder as well. Um, that's just how I, I usually like to have my stripes. I don't even know if chevroned is the right word for this, but like meet at a point. I think that's more, more fun. You could have the stripes continue on if you want to do also with this, if you were cutting it in the opposite direction. But this is what I'm planning on doing today. I can move these out of the way so I don't cut into them. And again, I'm cutting out this, cutting this out single layer at a time. And because I know this piece matches up with that front piece, I can do the same method again and cut out another one of these, match this, use this first striped piece for the back again as a template and cut out another one of these for the other side of the back. Because again, double sided fabric or fabric that doesn't have a side. It's really useful. So here I can go ahead and pin this shoulder to the uh, front for you can give you an idea of what this is going to look like when it's opened up. I should go see if they have any more of this fabric. It's so nice. But see, now this will chevron down the shoulder as well, like so. If I could find silk taffeta that was striped like this, wouldn't I be a happy camper? Alas, polyester will have to do. So again, I need to cut out one more of my back here. And whenever you want to match up prints, whether it's stripes, plaids, or even just like a floral or some other like uh, print design. If you ever want to worry about matching the prints, you are going to want to order a little bit of extra fabric to do so, depending on the print in question, um, because you're going to need extra fabric because you can't just cut it out uh, every any which way. You have to be able to plan ahead with that. And a lot of times I, that's the reason I don't bother to match my prints, like florals and things like that, or like uh, 
any even like plaid and stuff it's because it means buying more fabric and i'm cheap so i don't um now for the speaking of not having much fabric for the uh, ribbon ties on this wrap back top i'm just cutting what i have left into strips so it's about what is this five inches wide yeah five inches wide and i'm cutting the other end of this so one of my stripe one of my strips for the tie will be long stripes and one will be cross stripes like this but that is just the way of things because i only had so much fabric left after cutting the rest out i was almost afraid that i wasn't going to have enough and of course the sides of these need to be gathered down so i'm going to put my two rows of gathering stitching on the backs and on the fronts and i'll sew my strips together as well so over here i can sew my center front together because that's already been pinned i guess i should plug the machine in kind of helps to have some electricity flowing through the darn thing although this thing's motor is original from 1955 so one day it will give out on me i'm just hoping that day is far away honestly but i will go ahead and sew that center front seam with half inch seam allowance and because of all the work we did when cutting to be particular it should match up absolutely perfectly and here i can put my gathering stitching along the sides of my pieces as well so we can gather those down again we've eliminated the darts in this project and now I just have some gathering to control the same amount of fullness, creating that cone of the bust. And for my long strips here, I'm just going to turn them a quarter of an inch on either side, a little, maybe a little under a quarter of an inch, honestly, um, and pin that down and then stitch these on the machine just because I think that will be the fastest, honestly. This would be very, uh, if, again, if this was silk taffeta, maybe I would hand stitch it, but it's just polyester. We're gonna put it through the machine. Although that will mean that this is quite washable compared to a silk taffeta top. Although the lining I'll be using on this today, I am going to fully line this, by the way. I'm not going to show you the construction of the lining on camera because it's the same only again, you know? Although I did use the original wrap back top, top pattern with the darts for the lining, so I didn't bother doing gathering on the sides because it's creating the same shape. Watch my darts video. I'll put it in a card here. Whether I use the darts as darts or the darts as gathering, it's creating the same cone of the bust. So they still fit together even if I use the original darts for the lining and the new gathered version as the exterior fabric. So that's what I did. <laughs> but over here again, I'm putting more gathering stitching this time into the fronts. Just the largest stitch length over on my machine, basting length stitches, two rows right next to one another so I can gather these sides down and match them up with the back. But I do like fully lining these little wrap back tops. It's just like it's so easy to put these together. I love them. I made one in like three or four hours yesterday out of a very strange fabric. Um, you would have to have been following my Instagram to see that. It would have been a while ago now if you're as you're watching this video because I am pre-filming this video so that I can have some writing time this month. But um, I made this iridescent bubble organza wrap back top earlier in the month and I documented that process only on Instagram. And because I wasn't filming that project, it only took me around three or four hours, which was kind of nice. It's a very epic fabric. All right, so over here, Speaking of epic fabrics, this one's pretty epic as well. I'm going to line this up with my original pattern just so I can make sure that I've gathered this down to the correct size, like so. And then I can pin on one of my backs and start sewing these together. Um, I need to do that for all of these, so I will gather the rest of this down. Again, I like to tie off one end of my gathering, scoosh things down. I actually did run these through the serger, even though it was going to be encased and fully lined, just because this fabric wants to fray quite a lot. Um, a polyester taffeta usually does like to fray. A taffeta in general likes to fray apart. So I did run these little edges through the serger and uh, so that I didn't have to clip the underarm of this like curve under the underarm of the all-in-one, I just use a half inch seam allowance and then taper it down to a quarter inch at the curve under the arm. And then I just don't clip it. I just leave it at a quarter inch seam allowance. That's kind of how I get away with that. And because again, it will be fully lined. I don't worry about it. I do need a fabulous chartreuse feather hat to wear with this. Actually, there is a yellow hat yellow feather hat on Etsy right now that I've been trying not to buy for a long time. And as we know, I'm on a low buy this year. <sighs> so if anyone comes across a chartreuse in black 1940s hat, let me know. <laughs> I could go for one with this. Although I do have a little black silk tricorn like hat, like mini pirate hat with a pink rose on it. That isn't chartreuse, but I still think would look really cute with this top. So I should have thrown that on when I did my modeling of this, but I did not. So again, I'm having narrow seam allowance here, and then I'm widening back out to my full half inch here along the side seam. Because of course, if I narrow all the way, then I will have a little bit too much room in this top, and I don't want that. Hard to press this little buddy open. And again, I end up just surging it, which I do off camera. 
because I was like, oh, this is a mess. <laughs> because it's just trying to fray apart on me. And I'm like, oh, good. Irritating. So I just surged them and pressed them towards the back in the end. But you can see my side seam, it isn't like planned to match up the stripes, but just because the stripes are both vertical, they kind of match up. But here I can pin my shoulder seams together. And again, I'm being careful, although I've cut this out so that the stripes will match up, I'm being careful to make sure I pin it so that the stripes match up as well. So that when I stitch this with my half inch seam allowance, it'll again be chevron, just like the center front. This is how I get away with doing these things. This fabric does come in other colors. And to say I'm not tempted, you know, would be a lie. I am tempted. There's like a cobalt blue and like a, and more of like a slate blue color that are both very tempting to me. I think they have like a tealish emerald that for some reason I haven't ever played with. I think they're out of this chartreuse. Thank heaven. Otherwise I would have to buy some. They never had a black and white. Otherwise I definitely would have bought some of them. A huge black and white striped, like 1950s ball gown. Come on. It would have been too good to pass up. But even now, I'm like, should I just make a black and blue one? <laughs> Tempting. Again, do I have anywhere to wear anywhere? No. At least a top like this, I can pair it with a black pencil skirt and wear it to dinner. Like it's practical in my life. Or as practical as going to dinner can be during a plague. But uh, a ball gown, I really have no use for, sadly. Although I do have the tiaras if I ever get called into service, you know. And here is my lining. Again, I did that off camera. It's the same pieces. Sorry, pals. Just black rayon lining. Honestly, black rayon lining is a pain in the arse to work with. So we really, I don't need to be filming me doing that too. It'll just end up being too, it, it harasses me, honestly. Black rayon lining and I, rayon lining in general, we are enemies. But I'm just going to go ahead and bag line this top at this point. This is like one of the last steps here. And as you can see, this lining is flooping away from me because round lining is evil. It's so smooth and so nice next to the skin and so irritating to sew. It's the silkiest, most floopy stuff ever. Ooh, nightmare. But I'm going to go ahead and you can see how this taffeta wants to fray and pin all the way around the edges of this thing and bag line this top. And over here on the machine, I can sew that again with half inch seam I am leaving a little bit of an opening for myself, even though technically I think I can pull this through right side out through one of the sleeves. But I'm just so used to leaving and opening my bag linings that I just do. And then I'm coming around the corners of this wrap back top here. Just, again, leaving the needle down, bringing the presser foot up, moving around as need be, as I always do here, whenever moving around corners. And just sewing along, hoping I don't run out of bobbin thread, honestly. Also, when I was making this, I was running out of black thread. This was the project I was sewing when I was running out of black thread. And uh, I had to go find some around the house. Same for the... V neckline, just leaving the needle down, turning the project, putting the press foot back down, keep sewing all the way around the neckline and the back wrap, the bottom hem of this, just bag lining this whole thing. And doesn't this fabric look great with the green lighting on it? Mm, we all know how I love my LED lighting. And of course I will clip my curves and my corners here. Can't get around that when it comes to this kind of thing. Although the iridescent organza one that I made recently, I ended up top stitching after I pulled it all right so sides out because that fabric stitching gets lost in it really easily because it was a weird bubbly iridescent textured fabric you couldn't see the stitching on it anyway so i top stitched all the way around the edge of that um not under stitching but like top stitch down through both layers so that the sides would have a little bit more security or like all the seams would have a little bit more security of that bag lining so it's bag lined and then top stitched from the outside once it was all pressed into place just because i didn't want that fabric fraying apart on me because of having to clip the insides like that who made me nervous but here we are, a wrap back top. Alas, I will slip stitch that shut down there and I will slip stitch, touch, sh slip stitch shut bleh, my uh, sleeve hems here. So I'm just turning these half inch and a half inch for both the inside and the outside, lining those up like so, and then I can slip stitch these together for an invisible finish. And then I can sew on my hooks and eyes. Um, this time I'm just gonna do that on the one side. So this inside hooks inside of here next to my body, as I said in my first wrap top video. And then the other side, I will attach the long ties that I made, the long ribbon ties, so that I can have a bow, a big floopy bow, because why not, honestly? So I'm gonna see how I want to pleat these down and sew them into place here. I have these finished, just all hemmed, and I can go ahead and stitch these down. I'm just gonna pleat this roughly to about an inch and a quarter, pin it to my side seam, you can see the end is finished there because it will kind of be loose in here. You won't see it, but when it, the top is on, but in my closet, I want it to be finished. 
And I'll stitch that down there with some black thread, and then again here I'm just going to add another tie to the other end of this. Wrap back top here. My favorite pattern ever. <laughs> my favorite pattern that I've ever made that I just keep using again and again. I do have more fabrics in my stash that I want to make more of these tops out of. So I'll just sew on this last little tie here, and this project will be complete. And you can see the results of my stripe matching philosophy, I suppose. Here is my finished black and chartreuse striped wrap back top with its big bow sash. I do think the sash adds a little bit of something extra to this. Makes it a little more evening appropriate. I could of course wear this for daytime too, I think, but with the shine and the sash, I think it's more of a dinner to evening sort of garment. I am super pleased with how this top came out. I'm only just a little bit bummed I don't have any more of this fabric. And I am still tempted, even though I already have three colorways of this fabric in my closet. Is three enough when it comes to me? Never. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I work with stripes in my own sewing, and of course I will be back here with more vintage fashion and sewing real soon, and I will see you then. Bye.